We are now joined with Katie Lee, a very popular and talented voice actor of shows like Darkwing Duck, Lego Star Wars, uh, Totally Spies. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us, Katie. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And look! I know, that's you. <laughs> that's I will you. not forget you. who I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, first question. Um, how early in life was it that you knew you had a, a voice like this that could, you know, be on television shows and or commercials or, you know, cartoon shows? Probably not till I graduated high school and people started saying, you sound like you're 12. Because <laughs> I didn't notice. I didn't pay any attention. So, yeah, about when I got older and they said, yeah. So you I said, was oblivious. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but you said, you know, you went to broadcasting school. Were you doing that kind of like you? that's when you realized you knew you had the voice to go with the broadcasting to combine the two? Or was it you had the love for broadcasting first and then that kind of followed after? Okay, that's a great question. Thank I you. do love broadcasting, but I started trying to do voiceover and I went to an audition. Uh, well, okay, let me back up. Yeah. I stopped going to college my junior year because I didn't know what I wanted to major in. Uh. So then I made a demo and started auditioning and I went to probably my first or second audition and the girl sitting across from me was auditioning me and I said, how did you get your job? And she said, oh, well, I have a degree in broadcasting. I was like, shut the front door, what? <laughs> you can get a degree in broadcasting? That's what, from where? And it was from San Francisco State. And I said, All right, oh, great, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember what the first job was where you booked it and you went, I made it. This this is me. That's, this is what I'm doing. Do you remember that? what that was um, and the experience? No, I, I don't think I felt like I made it till no. I got a series. Okay, when I moved to L.A. after I graduated, because they in that, that time San Francisco, you couldn't really do character voice work. Yeah. And I was in San Francisco, so they said, go back to L.A. where they do animation. And I just said, well, I'll give myself two years. If I can make a living after two years, this is it. If I can't, oh, well, I better figure out, you know, get the classifieds out. Um, and so my First, well, my first commercial I actually booked with Rob Paulson. Oh, okay. I think, yeah, we were doing it for a department store, and he played my boyfriend. Yeah. Um, that was pretty fun. And um, probably the Dungeons and Dragons series. Well, well, we did a show before that where I was a star with Neil Ross called Pandemonium, which I'm sure nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> Uh, but we did one season of that, yeah. and that was promising. But then the second one, I, I think that's when you think, okay, this is really happening. Yeah, yeah. And that was Dungeons and Dragons. So it's going back a little bit. You were talking about your audition process a little bit. What is the typical process like for a voiceover audition? Because I imagine it's got to be a little different than you know being on camera or. Is it a little different? Well, you don't have to show your face. That is also true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, nowadays, most auditions are done from home. When I started, mm. we'd go somewhere. But now, they'll send you an email with a copy, and you have your mic, sure. and you come up with maybe one, two, or three different takes, mm -hmm. hopefully different, for the character, and you send it to your agent, and then you don't even know if your agent sends it in. And then, so because I just found this out. I just assumed everybody listened to my auditions. But in fact, the casting directors will say, Get to the agent, send us your best five. Okay. So you don't even know if you make the cut. Right. And then it gets to them, and then if they listen or not. Gotcha. So that's kind of pretty much how it goes. But then if they like you, you might go in and actually meet face to face and do a callback. Okay. okay, cool, cool, cool. So now you got that job. What's it like after that, fi really fine-tuning that character to exactly what the director wants? What like, do how mean? do you fine-tune that how voice? How do you so, do it? Yeah, so they, they hired you, and then they come in. Like, what's the process of really fine-tuning that voice to exactly what they're going for? You know what I mean? Well, if you're doing a series, it usually takes two or three episodes to, to really get a feel for what the character's like. Because sometimes you do the pilot, and then they'll record, you know, that might be the first episode. Yeah. And when you come into the studio, if you're lucky enough these days to have the ensemble cast, they'll listen to see, well, how does my voice sound with yours? If there's another female character, our, our voice is too close. Does somebody have to maybe change or pitch their voice up or pitch their voice down? And then once you 
do that, then, you know, the second script, you know, the writers kind of get a feel for how you interpret the character. And it's sort of a collab, a little dance. So yeah. it usually takes two. If you, wa if you watch any series. Sure. Sometimes they'll go back and re-record the first episode just because they it's want the exact voice evolved. They want yeah. yeah. Other times, if you just listen, you'll say, "Oh yeah, I see how that character's changed." No, that yeah. makes sense because you yeah. say the pilot. I'm thinking of just one of my favorite shows, American Dad, with uh, Steve. The character, his voice was super deep, deep, and then the next episode was just this high pitch, almost like girl voice. So there was just such a difference between. Like you said, they must say, oh, this voice must have clashed with someone else's voice, so let's change or it. Or they had a test audience who responded yeah. and they went, took it back to the people who think about things. And they yeah. came back and said, all right, let's recast this or do it this way. Yeah. It's a work in progress. Yeah. I'm curious, uh, you know, we are broadcasters, so we have to take care of our voices as well. We have to do all those things. What is a voice actor's, what's some of the things that you can't live without, you can't do your job without? In, in terms of preserving a voice, doing your job, are there things that you do to uh, make sure your voice is strong and it's it's powerful all throughout the season? What do you do? Uh, <laughs> lemon and honey, uh -huh. water, at least twice a day. Really? And then voice rest sometimes. But I mean, I imagine you're talking a lot more than I do at my job. So Rest is good. Yeah. Um, I actually, if I do get a sore throat, I like chop up garlic and ginger and I keep it in a jar of honey and get a teaspoon and add hot water to it. Um, I just started, I honestly, I've been doing this 40 years. Yeah. It's only the last couple of years I started really paying attention. Oh, okay. So doesn't mean you should all try this at home. Yeah. But, um, throat coat tea is really helpful, but it's only if, you know, like some jobs, I just finished doing a three three days in a row of a character. I'm working on a show. I think I can say it's called. It's not out yet. Yeah. Uh, time traveler Luke, and and I'm it's dubbed, and he's fighting all the time. So every episode, and we just do four hours straight, and he's like, ah, 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 <laughs> and you know, at the end of the day, Look, your voice rough. is yeah. tired. Yeah. So by the third day, it felt a little rough. But honestly, I think in my experience, if you're working every day, you're like warmed up every day. Sure, if yeah. you're auditioning every day, you're warmed up. I mean, you can, you know, do that kind of thing to, you know, do your tongue twisters to warm up. Drinking warm water. I don't drink cold, cold anything. And really? I think it's. Probably just because I don't like it, oh, but yeah. I, I don't think it's good for you either. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, but there's no, you know what? You hurt your voice, you go home, you don't talk to anybody and hope you sound better recover, the next yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So like you said, you've been doing this for over about 40 years. What are some of the changes to the business that have been for, in your opinion, the best and the worst? <laughs> okay, so I have like, an hour to answer. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the worst part, I think, is that two things. One, a lot of times when we record, we recorded separately now. And I miss being with everybody. It's, you know, if you're doing a show and everybody's there, that's the best. Like play off one another almost. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot more for the actor, financially speaking, there's a lot more non-union work. So it's harder to make a living than it was when I started in the 80s. Um, it's very different. Cable, streaming, whole different way of getting paid. So I know a lot of people think all I want to do is be a voice actor and work in animation. It's not really easy to make a living. Yeah. that way if before if you had two or three shows on the air you were good for the year right mm -hmm. Makes um, sense. but not now yeah uh, those are the worst the good the good the good is yes the good we always want to hear good about the good is when I walked into the studio for the first time and saw a computer with the wave file digital and I was like that's it I can do stuff from home I can send my demo over the internet. We don't have to buy CDs and pay for labels and send stuff. Yeah. So that's awesome. And, and I really like 
audio production. Mm. I, I don't know if you know, I work on a radio show called Adventures in Odyssey. We've been on the air for 33 yeah. years. And I love audio. I love that. And I love editing. I loved editing when I did it with a razor blade, and I love editing when I do it on my computer. So I enjoy that. Yeah. Do you use Audacity? Yeah. Yeah. That's probably the one. That's I the do. One. That's my favorite. Yeah. Now they have punch and roll. Do you yeah, know that? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're geeking out. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know. Yeah. But we're geeking out about it for sure. Uh, I imagine one of the fun things is going to events like these, is, is going and meeting fans and stuff like that. But you know, when like a kid recognizes your voice or if you're in a group setting like that where you're promoting the show, what is that experience like when, you know, at least kids or even adults come to you and recognize your voice and say, it's you. It's really adults. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. It's humbling. It's heartwarming to come to these events because when I did a lot of these shows that you mentioned, you guys were five, six, seven, eight years yeah. old. You're not gonna, you know, hear me or see me, um, you know, but now when people are grown up and they come and they share their experience or how you're the voice of their childhood or they break into tears or they just want to hug and you, it's like so much love, it's, so much better than coming home and having your kids yell at you. I'll tell you that right now. But I love my kids, but you know, it, it's, it's, you don't really, you can't appreciate it till that passage of time. Yeah. I've only been recognized two or three times by oh, okay. strangers. Yeah. Now that there's social media, you know, yeah. I think once somebody recognized my face, but right. yeah. yeah. It's not, it's not like, because I changed my voice, you know, sure. Sunny Gummy sounds like this, Baby Rolf sounds like this. Right. Uh, everybody's, you <laughs> know. A little different. Yeah. yeah. We've got, I got a character on the internet on a Legend Quest. And she sounds like this. So, you know, it's very different. Um, <laughs> they don't know. That's sweet. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah. It. So that's fun. It's really funny. I'll tell you someone else's story about that sure. if you have time. Yeah. You know, Jess Harnell. Hmm. Not, well, not he's, he's voice of Wacko on the oh, okay. Animaniacs. Yep. Yep. Oh, Animaniacs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah and uh, I think he's Wacko. Yeah. Anyway, so he was in he was in line Orlando in Disneyland, and and the kid had a Animaniacs shirt, and he was with his mom. And the mom says, "I love this story because it's so funny." And the mom, because kids don't get it. That's why this is my point. So his mom says to Jess. Oh, kids are waiting, waiting. Just tell the little boy, you know, tell him that you do that voice, that, you know, that'll make him happy. And just like, so finally he goes, hey, you like, you know, Animaniacs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He goes, I do. I do his voice. And then he goes, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 it like, doesn't yeah. register. And then he goes, side. like, then he was kind of butthurt, like, no, I really do. And the yeah. kid's like. Yeah, okay. All right, <laughs> okay, man. Yeah, Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. So do I. Yeah. Oh, that's, fine. that's a great story. Thank that's you a great for sharing line. There, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so finally here, you know, you use your voice for your job, and we noticed that you do a lot of guest speakings and going to places and workshops. So what are you trying to accomplish when people have you come out to speak at their events and stuff like that? Well, I like to share my experience of, I mean, Bottom line is, if I'm asked to do a talk, I usually just share how I think God created you a certain way, and you have life experience, and you have skills, and just keep doing the things that you're inclined to do that draws your attention, and then one day you're going to see where those things intersect. You know, just hang in there. I mean, that's kind of like my message, you know, and when I coach, what I hope to do is just give people a little bit of insight into themselves and what else they can do and always, you know, raise them up a little to, to do something they didn't know they could do so that they have just a little bit better from having worked with me. I like directing. I started directing oh, too cool. lately, nice. some cartoons. Great. Watch Chi Chi Love on kids YouTube. All right. Um, I directed it and also did a voice of one of the dogs. For that's pretty cool. Nice. Great. That's awesome. Well, that's really inspiring. I never thought about the past intersecting. Like it's that, like you know? it's like algebra. It's like yeah. the X, what? Y, <laughs> axis. axis. Yeah. That's all I remember. I guess it's geometry. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, don't it's know. like you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> well, Katie, thank you so much for being on the show with us. It was such a pleasure to have you on with yeah. us. And thank you for being on our show. Yeah, we it's appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back with more coverage of TV Warren's coverage of the Great Lakes Comic Convention.